Mahatma Gandhi is widely regarded as one of the greatest leaders of the 20th century and a symbol of peace, non-violence and human dignity. His role in India's independence movement, his campaigns against colonial oppression and social injustice, and his teachings of truth and love have inspired millions of people around the world. But behind the saintly image of Gandhi, there lies a darker and more complex reality. A reality that reveals his flaws, his contradictions, and his controversies. A reality that challenges the myths and legends that surround him. This is the ugly truth about Gandhi. Gandhi was born in 1869 in Porbandar, a coastal town in western India, then under British rule. He belonged to a merchant caste and grew up in a privileged and orthodox Hindu family. He married at the age of 13 and had four sons with his wife, Kasturba. He studied law in London and moved to South Africa in 1893, where he worked as a lawyer for the Indian community. It was there that he faced racial discrimination and developed his political activism and his philosophy of non-violent resistance, known as Satyagraha, or Truth Force. But Gandhi's time in South Africa also revealed his racism and prejudice against the native black population, whom he called Kafirs, a derogatory term equivalent to the N-word. He considered them to be inferior, uncivilized, and undeserving of the same rights as the Indians. He wrote in 1896, Ours is one continual struggle against a degradation sought to be inflicted upon us by the Europeans, who desire to degrade us to the level of the raw kafir whose occupation is hunting, and whose sole ambition is to collect a certain number of cattle to buy a wife with, and then pass his life in indolence and nakedness. Gandhi also supported the British war efforts in South Africa and in World War I and recruited Indians to join the army despite his professed pacifism. He believed that by proving their loyalty and courage, the Indians would earn the respect and the rights of the British. He wrote in 1918, To bring about such a state of things, we should have the ability to defend ourselves, that is the ability to bear arms and to use them. If we want to learn the use of arms with the greatest possible dispatch, it is our duty to enlist ourselves in the army. Gandhi returned to India in 1915 and became the leader of the Indian National Congress, the main political party fighting for independence. He launched several mass movements against the British, such as the Non-Cooperation Movement, the Civil Disobedience Movement and the Quit India Movement, which involved boycotts, strikes, marches and acts of defiance. He also advocated for the rights of the untouchables, the lowest caste in the Hindu hierarchy, whom he called Harijans, or children of God. He opposed the partition of India into two separate states, India and Pakistan, based on religious lines, and called for Hindu-Muslim unity. But Gandhi's political actions also had negative and unintended consequences. His campaigns often led to violence, riots and deaths, both among the protesters and the authorities. He was arrested several times and spent a total of about six years in prison. He was accused of being dictatorial, unrealistic and manipulative by some of his colleagues and critics. He alienated many of his followers such as B.R. Ambedkar, the leader of the untouchables, who rejected Gandhi's paternalism and his defense of the caste system. He also failed to prevent the partition of India, which resulted in one of the largest and bloodiest mass migrations in history and sparked decades of conflict and hostility between India and Pakistan. Gandhi's personal life was also controversial and problematic. He was obsessed with sex and celibacy and imposed his views and experiments on his family and his disciples. He made his wife and sons to take vows of celibacy and disowned his eldest son Harilal for renouncing his vow and converting to Islam. He also practiced brahmacharya or abstinence which involved sleeping naked with young women, including his grandnieces, to test his self-control. He wrote in 1940, I have been told that a person who wants to follow brahmacharya should not have any contact with women. I do not agree with this view. How can one who runs away from fire be called brave? Gandhi's sexual behavior was criticized by many of his contemporaries, such as his friend and biographer Louis Fisher, who wrote in 1950, Gandhiji was great but human. He had a right to make experiments but not with other people. He was unfair to his wife, unfair to his co-workers, unfair to the Indian people, and perhaps unfair to himself. 
His experiments were also seen as abusive, exploitative, and sexist by some modern scholars and activists who have questioned his moral authority and his status as a feminist icon. Gandhi's life came to an abrupt and tragic end on January 30, 1948, when he was shot and killed by Naturam Godse, a Hindu extremist who blamed him for appeasing the Muslims and betraying the Hindu cause. Gandhi's assassination shocked and saddened the world, and he was mourned as a martyr and a hero. His legacy and influence have endured and spread across the globe, and he has been honored and celebrated by numerous awards, monuments, and events. He has been hailed as the father of the nation in India and the Mahatma or the great soul in the world. But Gandhi was not a saint nor a savior. He was a human being with virtues and vices, strengths and weaknesses, achievements and failures. He was a man of his time and a product of his culture. He was a man of contradictions and a man of controversies. He was a man who changed the world and a man who was changed by the world. He was a man who sought the truth and a man who faced the truth. This is the ugly truth about Gandhi.